What's up Kdivas and welcome back to the channel. My name is Priscilla. I'm a Nigerian women's wear designer based in the UK and in this tutorial we're going to be making a very easy beginner friendly tote bag. Thankfully for this bag you don't need any sewing pattern so we're just going to jump straight into creating this bag. I'm also going to be customizing my tote bag using my Cricut Maker Easy Press and Easy Press Mat and this video is sponsored by Cricut so make sure to keep watching to the end to follow the entire process and I promise you it's actually very easy. I made this bag in half a day. If you do enjoy this video do give it a thumbs up, share it to anyone that you think will find it useful to watch if you haven't subscribed already you know we're not judging we're just going to wait for you to subscribe it's a red button you won't miss it and it's free so you'll be the first to know every week when i have new videos on the channel and with that being said let's jump straight into this tutorial I have gone ahead to cut out the main pieces for the tote bag. I have the main body which is this orange felt fabric. I also cut in the same dimension iron on interfacing and the lining fabric and the dimension is 30 by 15 inches. Now for the strap themselves this is what it's looking like. I cut in the main orange material and iron on interfacing too. The dimension for the strap is 20 by 3 inches and you would need a pair of each. Now moving on to the next stage of creating this tote bag, I'm going to go ahead and customize the front side of the bag first before stitching it up together. Now I'm folding it in half like so and then I'm going to go in and fold in the base by about 2.5 inches so this guides me on how wide my graphic can be. Now that I have that there, I'm just marking 2.5 inches below the top edge with a chalk. I want my design to be about 8 inches tall so it sits nicely on the front of the bag and is not too big and is not too small as well. Once I have that marked away, I'm going to set this aside and work on creating my graphic. I'm going to be cutting my graphic out with the Cricut Maker 3. Huge thanks to Cricut for sponsoring this video, for keeping the lights on and for keeping the channel going. I worked with them in the past and I'm excited to work with them again on on this project so i'm going to be using my maker 3 in addition to my easy press 2 and my easy press mat these tools just ensure that i create a graphic that is really good and stays put on my tote bag now this is a closer look at the maker 3 i'm going to leave a link down below for anyone who wants to check these out these tools give you the opportunity to add very cool designs to apparel, homeware, accessories, the list goes on and on. For my graphic, I'm going to be working with a smart iron-on in black and that is what I have here. The cool thing about the iron-on is you can just feed it into the machine and cut it out without needing a mat. One side is glossy and the other side is matte. Once that is all settled, I'm going to go onto the Cricut Design Space software. This is where the magic really happens in my opinion because they already have so many great recommended designs that you can try out if you don't know what to even work with. They have cool templates, text, fonts, shapes. So you can create your entire design on the Design Space software and then cut it on your Maker machine. Now for mine today, I decided to create a graphic that says and tunes goods and this I am going to be uploading as a PNG which means it's like a transparent background and I just want the text and the circle that goes around it. This is actually designed by my husband and and tunes is his last name so I thought it was the cutest thing to put on a tote bag. Not everybody would get the gist but I'm just ensuring that my graphic fits the size I had marked out on my bag. So when I cut and press this onto the front of my tote bag, it fits the way I want it to. Starting out, you can explore all of the text, the templates, the shapes that come with the design space software. If you don't know where to start, there are so many good suggestions in there. So you can have a play around with your maker machine. Now, once I'm happy with the dimension of my graphic, I'm going to go ahead and click make it. And with text, don't forget to click that mirror so when it's printed out and it's pressed on, it reads correctly. I'm going to go ahead and click continue and choose the material. In my case, I'm working with Smart Iron On. Ensure my fine point blade is loaded in place. And once I have that there, I'm going to go onto my Maker 3 machine. Now you see that that button is already blinking. It's a sign that I need to load my 
my smart iron on which i'm doing in here and once i have that loaded correctly ensuring that the edges of the smart iron on are under those clamps on the side i'm going to go ahead and click the load button so it feeds the material into the machine i've left enough space on the back so as this thing is moving back and forth nothing stops it or nothing ruins my process because i want this to turn out perfect once it's done measuring the material i'm going to go ahead and press the play button and then the cutting actually starts i will always be fascinated by how precise the precision of this cutting machine is on another level and it gives you such clean lines whether it's text whether it's shapes whether it's actual illustrations whatever you decide to cut and press onto apparel clothing accessories homeware the list goes on and on i give a thumbs up to that once it's done cutting i'm going to go ahead and unload the machine and then use my guillotine to cut down my smart iron on so I can save what is left for next time I want to create another design. I'm just going to feed that through, place down the ruler and then cut out the part that has the graphic design already cut out by my maker machine. I'm just going to trim that even down because I want to save every last bit of my smart iron on so I can use it again next time. Using this weighting tool, I'm going to go ahead and remove parts of the design that I don't want to transfer onto my tote bag. I only want to keep the text and then the circular shape that goes around it. So I'm going to peel off any part of the smart iron on that I don't want to keep. And the weighting tool just makes it easier to go around those like pointy edges, especially like within text. That way you're able to see that this is a clear A or that's a clear O and you have a nice a finished graphic ready to be pressed onto whatever thing that you are deciding to add your design to. Now this is what mine is looking like right now. It's looking really nice and cool and I'm going to go ahead to grab my Cricut Easy Press 2. This I've already plugged into place and set the temperature for 180 at first and 30 seconds press time. Once it's ready to press that button on the side turns green and i'm going to be pressing on my easy press mat that way i just avoid any errors or water or anything ruining my design i'm going in here to lay down the front of my tote nice and flat ensuring that it is somewhat centered on my easy press mat and then i'm going to grab the smart iron on with the cutout graphic already in place and I say centering and ensuring that everything is correct and is to your liking is important at this stage because once you press it down, there's no going back. So once I have that there like so, I'm going to flip it to the wrong side and I'm going to be pressing on the wrong side of the material. I'm just going to lay this down like this and then grab my easy press and press it over on the wrong side like so. I actually did this a couple of times. I feel like I could have gone up to the temperature of 205 or 203. That's how high this thing actually goes temperature wise. So I had to do it a few times before I could peel off my smart iron on backing without losing my text. So now I'm just going in to peel off the backing paper like so. I was so careful because I had done this thing a few times and I didn't want to ruin my graphic coming on my tote bag. But this is what it looks like. I love, love, love the outcome. I think my husband just found it amusing that I put his last name on a tote bag. But I don't know. I love it. Anyways, we're going to go ahead to join the tote bag pieces all together. And out of camera, I had pressed my iron-on interfacing on the wrong side of my straps and on my main tote bag itself that way it just gives my tote bag a little bit more body rigidity and helps it to hold goods over time now on my straps i'm going to go ahead to fold it like this and iron it down and then fold in the corners so once i have that fold in place i can take this to my machine and actually stitch along the folded edge this i'm going to repeat for both straps so that way they are ready to be joined to the main tote body bag now i'm stitching on a very narrow edge stitch i'm so glad i had an industrial machine at this point because this was a very thick stitch it was like four layers to get through once i had done it once on the folded edge i went to the other side to stitch it again it just created symmetry and i think it gave the strap a more finished look i did this for both straps for the bag and now i'm going to go to the top 
top edge and find my middle point because I would need to join the straps along that edge on both sides. Once I have that middle point in place, I'm going to space the straps evenly from the middle and from the side as well. So they are centered on this side and on the other side when I go on later on to pin it in place. Now I'm just going to pin both sides of the strap along this top edge of the bag. You want to have the bottom of the strap along this edge and the curved edge of the strap inside of the bag. Once I have done this for this side, I went ahead to repeat it on the other side of the tote bag. And then I'm going to be grabbing my lining piece and I'm putting right sides together of the main tote bag to the lining piece. I added some pins and I'm going to be stitching everything together in place, ensuring to leave an opening of roughly four to five inches so I can turn this piece inside out. Now this is what the bag is looking like all stitched in place. I'm going to cut down the corners so it allows me to turn the piece inside out and have sharp corners. You can also go in to trim down your seam allowance so you just have less bulk when you turn your bag inside out. Now I'm just pulling in the bag like so, revealing the right side, pulling out the corners using, you can use a scissors, you can use a pin, you can use a needle. So that way you have the corners of the bag coming out nicely. Once I was done revealing the right side of the bag, I'm going to take it to my machine and I'm going to be ironing it out nice and flat before I move on to the next step. After ironing the tote bag, this is what it looks like. Everything came together really nicely, but we still have that opening that we left to turn the bag inside out. I'm going to take this in my machine and I'm going to be sewing around the bag on a 0.25 edge stitch. This is going to close off the hole and it's going to secure both layers of the bag in place and hold down the bag strap. So as you wear the bag with time, your bag strap has not just a stitch that join the lining to the main bag, but you have this stitch holding everything together. Once that is done, the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to be adding an additional side piping. So I'm marking 1.5 inch away from the side like so. And once I have marked this with a chalk on one side, I'm going to go ahead to repeat the same on the other side. Now this chalk line is going to guide me to create a fold that I'll be stitching later on. I'm going to be folding it inwards like this. So you have a situation whereby you have it folded on this side and folded on the other side. And then you're going to go back in and stitch along the folded edge. This step is going to give your bag that book tote shape and it's something that would help it to stand if you put your bag on the surface with items inside and it just gives your bag even more structure. So I'm going to be stitching on this narrow edge stitch on both sides of the bag. So when you're all done, it should look somewhat like this. Once you're happy with everything at this point, it's already looking really, really good. I'm happy so far. I'm going to be folding the bag in half, putting right sides together, and I'm going to be sewing up the side seams first. And I'm going to be sewing on, I'll say like a half a centimeter seam allowance, very, very slim. We don't want to lose any measurements along the side seam. And I'm going to be joining that for both sides. Once that is all done, I'm going to be going to the bottom corner of the bag and folding out this point like so. This is going to help to create the base of the bag. And then from the point upwards, I'm going to be marking three centimeters or one inch. I'm just going to be marking this with a chalk. So it guides me on how far in I need to stitch along this bottom corner. Just going in here to draw that line in with the guide of my set square. And then I'm going to take the bag to my machine. I'm going to be stitching using a normal straight stitch. Remember to do a back stitch at the beginning and at the end of my stitch to secure everything in place. I went ahead to repeat the same step for the other side of the bag and I'm going to turn this inside out to reveal the right side. You can also go in to tack that pointy angle to the side seam if you don't want it going in and out but 
I thought it looked really cool like this and this is the bag all done it came out so cute I've already worn this out several times and it's such a great errand bag like when you're going to grab small groceries when you're going to the library when you want to style your outfit with a semi casual bag it turned out really really nice and it's very sturdy as well because it has like three layers thanks to Cricut once again for making this project possible i hope you guys enjoyed watching this video if you did do give it a thumbs up leave your thoughts and ideas down below and i'll see you next time